Hey everyone, I'm Samia, and I'm here to talk about our work on re-envisioning the current RDMA interface for distributed systems. The past few years have seen a continual increase in network bandwidth, and as signaled by Moore's law, CPU speeds have begun to stagnate. Therefore, it has become critical to reduce the involvement of the CPU when it comes to networking. RDMA achieves this by providing a standard accelerated interface to access remote memory directly through the network. Following these hardware trends, recent years have seen a plethora of distributed systems work that have been redesigned to utilize RDMA. These include key value stores, distributed transaction, and replicated storage systems. The RDMA interface broadly has two kinds of operations, two-sided and one-sided. Two-sided operations have standard message passing semantics. Here, the client machine CPU invokes an RDMA send operation, and the application running on the remote host invokes an RDMA receive operation. On the other hand, one-sided operations allow a client to read or write directly to a remote memory region with no additional CPU involvement on the remote host. They both come with their own trade-offs. One-sided operations are faster and more CPU efficient, but their interface is restrictive, allowing only reads and writes to pre-registered memory buffers. On the other hand, two-sided operations offer richer semantics, but are often slower and less CPU efficient. Let's take a closer look at this trade-off with an example. Many implementations of remote data structures use indirection. Here we have a layout of a hash table that's used in TLOS and farms key value stores, two state-of-the-art RDMA systems. Here, a hash-based index data structure maintains pointers to the actual values stored inside the key value store. How would we use RDMA to implement a GET operation in this case? We could issue the GET as a standard two-sided RPC that's then processed by the remote CPU and returned to the client. This only takes one network round trip, but would consume CPU cycles on the remote host. Suppose we use one-sided operations. We'd need to issue one one-sided RDMA read to get the address of where the value is located, and another one-sided RDMA read to actually retrieve the value. The benefit here is that there's no CPU involved, but we'd need at least two network round trips to process a GET operation. Note that the number of network round trips would increase if there were any hash collisions involved. Here, we can see that additional network round trips can make one-sided implementation slower. What can we do about this? We could forego the use of one-sided operations completely by relying on RPCs, but this would mean that we're also giving up all the CPU efficiency that one-sided operations come with. We could also allow applications to install their own custom one-sided logic at the NIC. But this approach comes with significant deployment and security challenges. There is a third option that this work attempts to explore. That is, can we propose a set of standard extensions to the current RDMA interface that addresses this problem? How would one go about designing this extended API? These primitives must be generic, yet have the power to express application logic concisely. They must also generalize to a large class of target applications and must be efficient enough and feasible to implement on different network stacks. Here is a list of all of our proposed extensions to the traditional RDMA interface. We chose these based on their applicability to a large class of systems, as well as their feasibility to implement across different networking platforms. The proposed extensions fall into three main categories, indirect operations and enhanced CAS extend the functionality of current RDMA primitives. Allocation is a new primitive, but is feasible to implement by reusing a lot of the existing RDMA infrastructure. Chaining allows for composition of other PRISM primitives. A detailed discussion of the PRISM API is in the paper. Now, let's try to apply the PRISM API to the indirect reads example that we saw earlier. Here, instead of an RPC or two one-sided RDMA reads, we can issue an indirect read PRISM call. Here, the target address specified by the indirect read is interpreted as an address of a pointer. This is then dereferenced to obtain the value that's returned to the client. This only takes one network round trip and there's no CPU involved in the process. More complicated patterns of indirection can be implemented using operation chaining. We prototyped our prism primitives on two different network stacks. 
One is a SNAP-inspired software or DMA prototype that partitions some CPU cores that are dedicated for packet processing. The second is a SmartNIC prototype that uses the Mellanox Bluefield 1 SmartNIC to execute the PRISM primitives. In the paper, we also extensively discussed how our primitives could be implemented on a hardware NIC ASIC while reusing many of the underlying mechanisms that already exist in today's NICs. To demonstrate the potential benefits of PRISM, we use three case studies. These include a key value store, a replicated block store, and a distributed transactional storage system. Each of these applications is widely used in practice and has been the subject of much research in the community. Our proposed extensions allowed us to efficiently implement all of these applications entirely in terms of the one-sided PRISM primitives. In each of the applications, we reviewed existing RDMA implementations of the applications and we designed them using PRISM primitives. There were mainly two kinds of benefits to using PRISM. We could implement operations that already used one-sided RDMA using fewer network roundtrips with PRISM. Secondly, we could express operations that originally had to be implemented as RPCs efficiently in terms of the one-sided PRISM API. Now let's take a look at how PRISM can be used to improve transaction processing. For this, we introduce FARM. FARM is a state-of-the-art transaction processing system over RDMA. Here, we consider a storage system where data is partitioned among multiple servers, and clients group their operations into transactions. During the execution phase, they either read or write data from different servers. Reads use one-sided RDMA, and writes are buffered locally in the execution phase. After all the operations finish executing, the transaction enters the commit phase. FARM uses a variant of the two-phase commit protocol with three broad phases. The first step is trying to obtain locks for the write set. If the lock phase succeeds, then we validate the read set to ensure that objects that have been read haven't changed since the execution phase. If the first two phases are successful, in the last phase, updates take effect and all locks are released. In FARM, the update phase and the log phase have to use RPCs, but the read set can be validated using one-sided RDMA reads. Let's see if there's a way we can build something that can do better than FARM. The execution phase of FARM needs no further improvement since all communication that occurs between clients and servers here uses only one-sided operations, but there is scope for improvement in the commit phase. We could attempt to replace the RPCs in the log and update phases using the PRISM API, but in order to do so, we need to make some modifications first. In FARM, data is stored in a hash table that's accessible via RDMA, and each object is associated with a version number and a lock. But this layout wasn't designed to allow non-local changes to the version numbers. In order to be able to prepare and commit transactions with no CPU involvement, these have to be accessible to clients via RDMA. So we couple the version number with other metadata in the hash tables index so that they're available to the client. Secondly, version numbers must be client generated since the operations are entirely one-sided. For this purpose, we use timestamps generated by loosely synchronized clocks. For each object, we store a timestamp of the latest reads, writes, and commits that occurred to that object, followed by a pointer to its current value. With these changes, note that all the OCC checks needed in the commit phase can use PRISM's enhanced CAS primitive with no additional CPU involvement. Now let's try to write a commit protocol using PRISM. At the beginning of the commit phase, a timestamp is chosen such that it's larger than all the timestamps recorded in the read set during the execution phase. Locking for the write set is done by issuing an enhanced cache operation on the write timestamp. If this PRISM enhanced cache succeeds, it is equivalent to obtaining a lock on this key and prevents any concurrent readers or writers with a lower timestamp from succeeding. In the validation phase, we validate the read set by ensuring that the write timestamp hasn't changed. This ensures that there are no concurrent writers with the intent to write and commit. Then we update the read timestamp. This ensures that no other concurrent transaction with a lower timestamp that reads their writes to this object after this point can commit. If all the read write validation checks succeed, Finally, in the update phase, we install the write by using a chain of PRISM's 
allocate and indirect write primitives. One of the novel contributions of our primitives is that they enable a new class of one-sided optimistic concurrency control mechanisms. A detailed description of this protocol, as well as the design of other applications we implemented with PRISM are in the paper. We compared PRISM TX with our implementation of the FARM protocol, using both hardware and software impl RDMA implementations for FARM. PRISM TX outperforms FARM in both throughput and latency. With a lower message complexity enabled by PRISM primitives, PRISM TX is about five microseconds faster than FARM and reaches about a million more transactions per second before saturating the network. To conclude, PRISM significantly expands the design space for RDMA-based applications by offering a middle ground between the restrictive RDMA read-write interface and the full generality of RPC communications. 